Hi guys. This Aunt Bee from Aunt Bee's Homestead. Welcome to my life. If you will, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button. Billy. Hi, Teresa. Okay, so I can see the chat. Good. Okay, so today, if you come in, just say hi so that I can see you. Today is the first real live that I've done since owning this Aunt Bee's Homestead channel. So, I want to let you know a few things. I'm going to be working on a all-in-one comfy comforter today. Uh, it's something that I'm working on behind the scene, and I'm going to finish, hopefully, with you watching and chatting with me. Hi, bro farmer. Hey, good to see you. That's a funny guy. <laughs> so, guys, thank you for coming in. So, like I said, I'm going to be working on a comfy comforter. That's this. This, this, this. Looks comfy, right? Yep. And I think we all know who that character is. But it's not about that character today. It's about me finishing this comfy comforter so I can get it to the little baby that it belongs to. And then uh, this is the pillow that goes with it. Makes you want to go to sleep, right? Look, it's comfortable. And then I have some mail as well. I have ah, two packages that I want to open. I want you guys to see that. And sorry, I was supposed to get on a, a few minutes ago, but I had a few things to work out, a few kinks to work out, trying to get my cam camera up. Uh, hopefully you can see it good. I'm gonna have to twist the camera around uh, because I'm in a smaller space at my small desk today. All right, so, but, if you can see me, that's a good thing. We can get started. So let me tell you something. I have phase fashion, right? To where I design and uh, sew usable items, I'll say. That could be anything. It could be the comfy comforter and the pillows. It can be a beanie, you know, if you've seen me before, you know I love beanies, and there's a backstory to that. Uh, maybe I have time to talk about that too. So beanies, uh, bags, all of those things. Uh, this is something that I love doing. Uh, that's not my profession, my primary profession, but I can hustle, you know, with sewing, I've, I've done my thing with sewing. So, when you see Faye's Fashion, check it out. That's my point, that's my whole point. Check out Faye's Fashion. And then, we definitely, uh, we definitely want to support all of your pages. So, when you come on there, because I'm new to 
chatting with people on YouTube. So not chatting with people, period. <laughs> because I was a community figure down south uh, before moving up north, uh, Tallahassee area, a few months back. So this is definitely something I would love for you all to support, and I'll definitely support you. I talk a lot, so when I come to your page, I'm going to look at your video, and then I'm going to talk about what I've seen in that video, and I might ask questions because I can tend to get nosy sometimes. <laughs> if I say something that you don't like, remember we don't know each other personally, so don't take it personal just let me know like send me a message or something and say okay that's not what we do on youtube chat i'll learn and then we can move forward <laughs> so thank you guys for helping me the last time i got on when i looked at the replay the video was sideways so if you are still here Go ahead and let me know if you can see me with the video upright, because that's what I'm going for today. And let's see. Okay, so I think what I'll do first is just open some mail. So this first mail that I have is from the owner of Tree Luxury Candles. Out of Macon, Georgia. And I have pretty glitter pens. See that? And I have a journal. Well, this person who sent this knows that I love to write and I write books. I do make money off of that. So let me go ahead and show this to you all. I write books. I write books for children. I write books for adults. So this is my bookworm. We call him Book Book that, we, uh, that I published in 2019. And this bookworm loves baby apples. I illustrate the story. I write the story and I publish the story. This is done through uh, Jones Educational Consulting, LLC. And that's what brought me back to YouTube after years of my channel just sitting there. I also have okay i also have is kindergarten ready for me that's the book that i have so that explains to you why tracy has sent me this journal from tree luxury candle because she knows i write okay so i'm going to put all of this to the side thank you tracia for when you watch this, perhaps on the replay. And I have another package here, and I thought it would take me a minute to open this, so I started peeling it a little bit. This is from Auntie Ellen, Ellen Panky. Panky. Over at G Quad Traditions. Uh, Hickabilly said, I'm sorry, at a restaurant chatting with locals, okay. Did I miss anything? Oh, okay. I just started opening mail that I've received. Um, one mail came from someone who knows that I like to write, so they sent me a journal. And this is from Auntie Ellen, Ellen Panky, and let's see. Let's see what we have. She's a good rapper. <laughs> and, let's see. Ah, 
She's savvy too. Look, she used look like a brown paper bag, and she wrapped the box with it. I like that. Okay, let's put this to the side and let's get right down to it. Now I knew I was going to need my scissors for this. Hold on. Get my box. And let's see what we have. So what are you guys doing today? We're supposed to be chatting with each other too. What are you guys doing today? You know what I'm doing because I'm on here showing it. Thanks, Hickabilly said. That's cute work. Thank you. Okay. Let me get inside of this, guys. Thank you for bearing with me. Sorry. All right, let me get inside of this. Box here. Auntie Ellen, I'm about to reveal what you sent to me. Oh boy, they are good wrappers. Glad, cause nobody got into this. If I'm having to break into it. Okay, all right. So broke farmer at the grocery store with catch. Okay. All right. Thank you. I really appreciate you coming in. Keep up the good videos. Oh wow, look. Well, you know what Auntie Ellen's famous for. See, she said, Auntie Bev. Let's see what she says. <laughs> she sent me acorn squash. Nice. <laughs> and she said, Dearest Bev, this card reminded me of you and your writing, old school style. Good. Enjoy your quilt blocks. About 13 yards. Do you guys know how much that is? Wow, 13 yards. I'm gonna open it and let you see what it looks like. Put this over to the side. And then she said, P.S. Daddy always said, <laughs> you can't eat all the flowers or fabric. Acorn squash seeds. Thank you, Auntie Ellen. I love it when people write. And this is what the front of the card looks like. And it has a typewriter. That's so thoughtful, right, guys? Ah, oh, she knows I write, so she sent a typewriter. Nice. You barely see typewriters anymore. I And she sent squash seeds. I'm gonna make sure I put those over there. So let's look at what the fabric, see what the fabric looks like. I see. Hi, China Moss Farm. Hey, come on in. This is what Auntie Ellen sent me. Ooh, I like. Oh, you know what? I'm about to cry. My mom did this, this type of uh, work. I have a video of her holding it up. Nice. And I've begun to do that. She tried for years. This is the chat part, okay, guys? She tried for years to get me to sit down and sew, but I was so busy running a school, running schools. Uh, and while managing a school, I opened my own business. So this is about eight years that I've owned uh, Jones Educational Consulting, LLC. 
And I was so busy doing all of those things that I didn't sit down and do this type thing that she wanted me to do. Well, this I can do, but what I haven't done is made an official quilt. So Auntie Ellen knows I come to her page to look at the things that she does there and to try to participate when I'm not in the car. And uh, now she sent me something that looks similar to what my mom's done. And that is just heartwarming. Yeah, this is nice, 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 nice. So I wanna say, how could I go wrong with this? If I can, she said, if I could sew straight lines, <laughs> I could, I could sew pretty straight lines um, that, you know, I could probably pull this off. So, yeah, these look very nice. Very nice. And if you know Auntie Ellen, you know when she puts something together, it's going to make sense. So, thank you very much for all of this fabric. And I did tell her, my disclaimer was, uh, since I move quickly when I'm doing things and between all the other things that I do, that I would have to do lap quilts, uh, the smaller ones, because I know she's done huge things. And yeah, so, Thank you very much. I appreciate this. And I I won't let you down. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make good use of it. So, yep. That lunchbox. That lunchbox is adorable. Oh, that's Hickabilly. <laughs> Hickabilly said hi, China Moss. And then that lunchbox is adorable. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. So let's get down to business. I'm going to put this over to the side. Actually, when I made this uh, beanie, I wanted to make a uh, versatile beanie. So let me show you everything it can do. Let me tell you this first. This is part of a pant leg. So I heard Auntie Ellen talking about she takes material from pants, et cetera, jean materials from pants. Same thing, I, I don't always wanna say anything while I'm on someone's live uh, about, you know, I do the same thing, et cetera, et cetera. But that's where this jean material came from, pants. And I upcycled it, and I like to upcycle things. So this material came from pants as well. So, and I made earrings using it and everything. So my hat, my beanie has a bag. And I could put my earrings in there too. Yep. All right, guys, so let me put this over to the side and then get back to this. Okay, so... As you can see, see, I trimmed off the edges of this material that I'll be using today, the fabric that I'll be using today. And you see, this stuff frays, it'll be everywhere, like when you cut it. So I tried not to get it to where I could cut it today. I try to get it to, to the point to where all I have to do is find a place for this piece. And you see, I have to make sure those edges aren't exposed. So I'm gonna fold it up. Hold on. I'm gonna fold them in. Let's see if I can get around here so you can see what I'm doing with my hands. Take this strip and I'm going to fold it, see, I fold it in, fold it in again, and then I'm going to close it. So by the time I finish, it's going to look like this, okay? 
Let's get pull this back. Hopefully you can see the machine a little better. So you need my hands right now. Anybody have any questions for me? Someone said, I love that camo. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, hello, the retired gardener. Good to see you. Come on in. So what I'm doing now is showing them this comforter that I'm making. Let me go back a little bit. The comforter that I'm making. And I have a soft comfy material on the back and I used a sweater I bought a sweater and I used that thick sweater to be a part of this comforter this pink well mauve m-a-u-v I used that to go on the back of this uh, thin material Thin, uh, thin sheet. So I cut it up and I cut some jean material and I'm making my comforter. See? So I'll show you the inside of that because this is going to be important. I'll show you how the child can use this. How the parents could help the child use this because the child is small right now. But I, when I make things, I want to make them so they can last for a while. So I made the inside extra long, like 24 inches. 24 inches, even though the baby is tiny right now. 24 inches uh, or a little bit more. So that when they pull this out... And add it to the other uh, 24 to 28 inches, then it could be for a big kid. <laughs> uh, and when I say big kid, I mean a larger kid, a uh, child who is probably four to five years old, because I've seen them get in, a, in and out of bean bags for years. Uh, I've been in early education for 33 years now so the business came later but I've ran other businesses uh, for other people and I finally said I can do this for myself after all that time so uh, who's here okay thank you retired gardener she said beautiful beautiful all right good all right, so, all right, so you've seen the inside. Let me go ahead and get my little pin cushion. So I, okay, Broke Farmer was at the grocery store. Hickabilly was in a restaurant talking with locals. That's a good thing. Uh, so let me see. Retired Gartner, what, what are you up to this morning? And if I can't see you, you can just drop in the comment box some of the things that you plan to do today. So which needle do I want? Something big, something long. Okay. Because I think before I, before I go to the machine, I'm going to do a little hand stitching here around this edge because I want this edge to drop down. Transformer blankets. <laughs> yes. Oh, I said I was going to tell you all the things that this blanket can be used for, right? So what I did was started writing on the card. That's the teacher in me. I started writing on the card all the things that it could be used for. So I said this all-in-one comfy blanket can go in the car seat. So if you've ever put a baby in the car seat and you've seen how 
filthy car seats can get. If the baby's eating uh, uh, and dropping food down. So I said, because we didn't like for my nieces and nephew to get in filthy car seats. So you can put this inside the car seat before the child gets in and they can rest on this blanket and be comfortable. And then if you really want to be creative, you can turn it upside down like this because this is how you get into a sleeping bag or a comforter. Uh, or my comfy comforter is like this. So when the child gets in the car seat, you can slip it up his or her legs, especially in the winter, and they can be in the bag like this, and the bag can be up to their chest like this, and then they'll be looking down at the design, and you, you can put a book in their lap, you can do any of the creative things, Thank you. Yes, so this hat is leaning. I made extra long beanies, right? So that they could look like, I forget the name, uh, that the, the women, the sisters over in Africa tie up. Well, I looked into tying those up and I could do it. But I was like, what if it falls off? So I prefer putting the hat on and having it sag on the side. See, you get almost the same effect. And it could go different ways. I know, guys, it seems like, see? You can put it up like this. And I did this on the video that I made. And you can clamp it in place with a decorative clamp. You can pull it all the way back and blouse it like this and you can have it down like that so I mean so much you can do I have a habit of wearing my beanies over to the side like this so you can do that uh, <laughs> the retired gardener the retired gardener said I need that to cover my big forehead well, my forehead is big too, but hey, it is what it is. And um, I dress it up the way I can and I don't worry about it. Sometimes I stick it out and my sister talks about it. <laughs> How much would I charge to make it? Uh, one of my sisters who sells online, uh, because I'm used to doing everything in person uh, until not long ago. So one of my sisters who sells online said that I should charge about $25 for it. And I'm telling you guys, because this one I have not sold uh, before. But let me show you some things that I have. And I make all types. Just simple carry bags. I mean, this may not be for the person who likes, you know, different things, but little bags like this, reversible bags. Reversible bags. You see the lace at the top once you turn it in. And um, so, yeah, she told me you should charge about $25, you know, uh, for it. And but depending on what you want, uh, we can talk about it. Uh, I, I don't think is a bad price because I think I got about five or six styles out of this one beanie. So to me, it's worth at least $5 per style. So I would say about $25 uh, too. Thank you. Let's see. Everyone have a good day heading home. Okay. All right, Hickabilly. Thank you for coming. And I'll see you on your page as usual. Okay. So, so the retired gardener, what, what do you think? Oh, you said that's not a bad price. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, let's connect. And then you can tell me what you like. On our About Us page, you can see um, 
you can see what's there. Uh, and I don't know if you saw the part, I do upcycle material and that helps keep down the cost. Like my mom and my sister, they're the ones who sold the most uh, when it comes to uh, making things like this over time. Cause uh, if you missed that part, I was busy managing schools and traveling. So now I'm doing these things and uh, I would love to connect, yes. So some more things that I said I was going to show you. Um, I found this material. I found this material. And to me, I absolutely love it. So I told you I make these earrings, right? Well, I can no longer wear earrings that hook in my ear instead I wear clip-on earrings so I made bulbs so that I can clip my clip on the top of these earrings and then wear so you love paisley oh I love paisley yes and depending on the color and then I also made these long bulbs you see that with the cord wrap. Yep. So. And. I make them to where. They can be either clip on. Or earrings that you hook it. Fish hook earrings. I also made. These out of the bulbs. Because I have. A long and round face. <laughs> So I like things that hang down a little bit so that they can show. And you see that? This has a little glitter in My husband and my mom challenged me. Thank you. Uh, my husband and my mom challenged me when I had this scraps from this material to make something. I sat here and made earrings. I made a purse. I'm not sure that I'll be able to find the purse before we end. I made a head headband she knows how to get me started so she challenges me i like a good healthy challenge all right and see this is the headband that goes with it i can't put it on now but and i probably wouldn't wear all three pieces together i don't know depending but because it blings a lot i probably wouldn't wear all three pieces together but i certainly keep them on hand all right and trust me i don't have attention deficit or anything like that nothing against anyone who does i'm just trying to show you all as much as i can and i do remember that i'm working on the comfy blanket <laughs> all right and then what else so bags and then one more. This, I actually made this bag using satin material. And it has what on the inside? Hey, Slee. And thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. Speaking of long beanies, have you ever taken I have taken two and I have what oh no I haven't done it yet no I haven't done it maybe I should right <laughs> and uh, as my husband says we're all family <laughs> we're all family so I yeah and that's good that you've done that so 40% Nigerian. Wow. And you, so if you could probably send me a link, uh, you know, the link that you used when you got in touch with the people for your DNA test, that'd be good. <laughs> you see, you're Nigerian. <laughs> could be, I, I, I could be, yeah, but I don't know for sure, yeah. And this, this is, um, uh, a skull cap that I made and 
I like using the ribbed material. Where's, hi, Auntie Ellen. <laughs> yes. Okay. Auntie Ellen, I showed the beautiful material that you sent and you almost had me in tears because I didn't realize the design that you made is so close to the design that uh, my mom has. And I have on a video, so I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you on the video that her material and her design is similar to the design that you have. Uh, she makes quilts too. And I was telling the chat that I finally sat down and this is going to be my challenge. Thanks to you, Auntie Ellen, for getting me the material. But it came in the mail and let me pull it back up. I have it here. Ta-da! Right here. Yeah. And some of the same colors she used as well, including this lime-like color. The blues, the reds, she used these and the same exact design. Yep. Thank you so much. Yes, blessings. Thank you for sending me these blessings. I appreciate it. And I said earlier, if you were to look at the replay, I said earlier uh, that I won't let you down. I could do the straight stitch <laughs> and I can put it together. So thank you for that. I'm just showing them some of the things I have have done, including what I'm wearing on my head. And I know Auntie Ellen does purses. Let me show you. Oh, this is the long, I showed you the skull cap. This is the long beanie. I was working on that on, I, I did a short on this. So this will do basically the same as this. So I think it's about 18 to 24 inches uh, long for these beanies that I make that overlap like this and that you can style in multiple ways. So, all right, so let's put that one down there. And then I made, oh, I had this on. I still have to finish that part. So I like to upcycle material, as I said. So I made this bag. And I always do something different than, a little different than what my mom said. Let's see what Auntie Ellen said. Hold on, let me see what she said. I knew you would like those traditional, yeah, fabrics. I, I do, I do. I'm so used to my mom doing things like that and you're correct. You are very thoughtful and I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. So, this is what I made. My mom was happy, but she doesn't like when I deviate. I got in a hurry, so I used a decorative stitch. I folded the material in like this. I kept the lining, and she was like, no, that's not how you do it. But that's my mom, so we won't judge what she says. That's how she is. And I also made a, a case for glasses to go on the purse, the bag. And I used a little button to hold it on. Yep. <laughs> Auntie Ellis says she always deviates. <laughs> yes. But that's the artist, right? Auntie Ellis, you, you, yeah, you know. That's the artist in us. <laughs> yep. So, oh, and this one, let's see, does it have, is this the one with the pocket? No, it's not the one with the pocket. So what I thought to do with this is to, 
fold it again for those who want to hold the strap the correct way to fold it again so that the purse could get even smaller so versatility you can have a wide one or you can have a more compact purse but either way it still has the glasses case the glass case the really really i have all kinds of glasses okay all kinds of frames and different size frames so i'll show you this size could probably fit but these frames definitely wouldn't fit i didn't make the uh, case that big so that gives you an idea of what could fit in probably a standard size glass can fit in this okay so let's put this away and let's get my bag again and see if I have the one last thing to show you before I go into finishing this bag. Oh, let me show you this. I am just out of control sometimes with the way I repair things. Okay, my needle and thread is still in here, okay? So, you know how I told you guys that I am losing weights and I've lost 52 pounds now. So still have a ways to go, but I'm proud of my accomplishments so far because my husband and I worked hard. He went to the gym with me. Um, he was my coach <laughs> and he also said, kind things to help me keep moving forward. So I thought I was so small that I can get back in like that tiny 27 inch waist that I had. Yeah, I don't have that uh, right now, but I'm not super far off. <laughs> I'll, I'll get back down to at least, yeah, at least 29, 30. I, I'll get back there. So I tried this belt, right? Because I love this color. Thank you for saying congratulations. I tried this belt because I love this color. So I took it with me. It matched my clothes. Uh, I always take a little something with me. So I have this little box, something, you know, nice that I can hide my sewing kit in uh, when I get on the road or when we get on the road. So I take those with me. You're working on it too, the retired gardener. Hey, that's all we can do. I mean, I'm not that one who's going to beat myself up. I'm going to live my life, keep moving forward, and I'll get it back off. I mean, I wasn't born with it on. It doesn't have to stay on forever. I'm at a point in life to where I can slow down enough to think about me um, along with caring for everyone else and that helped so sometimes you have stress that you don't know you have because you're so good at managing your day and managing everything else but then when you go in and you crash every day uh, after doing all of those things that might be a sign that you need to back up a little bit and then you can get some weight off you know uh, that's what's working for me and I can cook I cook everything uh, and I use uh, things that have only a couple ingredients in them if I'm getting something from outside of home and it's working. I didn't do anything magic. Uh, I did, uh, we call my husband Tennis Jones in the book that I'm writing about uh, his life and his recovery 
uh, his health wise when I say recovery uh, physical he had a uh, physical impairment and he's an athlete and he fought his way back so Tennis Jones is the book that I'm writing uh, so yeah there's a lot in there I don't even want to go there so anyways he helped me uh, now that he can walk again, he got me out on the tennis court with him. And that's when I noticed being out on the tennis court for just 30 minutes, because it was so blazing hot out there. For 30 minutes, though, getting that vitamin D, uh, I came back and after about a week, I was like noticing that I was losing weight before I know it. Before I knew it, I was at 10 pounds and then it kept coming off and kept coming off. Uh, because I kept doing things. I kept going with him, following him, uh, walking when he rides his bike. He rides uh, miles and miles, and uh, I would just, I would walk as much as I could. And it was so cool because, like, he celebrated without saying, yay. You could tell he was celebrating uh, my accomplishment, and that made me go uh, even more secretly. So, and he waits on me to say, I want to go instead of dragging me. So I, I really appreciate that. So all of that losing weight made me think I could wear the belt. That is, let me see. I don't see the size on it, but it's too little, okay? <laughs> so it made me think I could wear it. I took it, uh, the retired guard, let's see. What really helps her is no eating after seven and walking. No, we do not eat after seven. I started following him. I was cooking for him and I would eat a little later, but uh, yeah, I definitely stopped eating later, later after seven, after eight, you're right. So that helped. So about six o'clock, that's why when you all go live at six and stuff like that, we're at dinner uh, most times. And then sometimes I'll set up my tripod and I'll listen in, um, you know, once we're almost at the end. So if I come in late, that's why I'm trying to stay on track, guys. I got to stay healthy if I'm going to stay around. Uh Yes, he is my cheerleader and uh, retired gardener said, God bless him. Yes, we, oh, I appreciate him more than he knows. I tell him, but more than he knows. Uh, and Auntie Ellen said, I'm slowly writing a memoir. Fabrics keep me distracted. <laughs> Fabrics keep you distracted. <laughs> It, you know, you're good at using fabrics. I bet that does keep you distracted. But keep writing because we need your wisdom, Auntie Ellen. Uh, we need your wisdom. Uh, your generation has so much to offer. And the way things are going, the way people talk these days, we need some grounding. We need someone who's wise uh, to share because I think wise people get away from that get away from sharing because they don't know how the younger generation is going to accept their words. But sometimes you have to just put it out there in a kind way and be amazed at all of the people who will pick that information up. That's why I started talking. That's why I talk on people's uh, pages so much uh, and ask questions because people don't do that anymore. Um, they're afraid of what someone might say. And I said, if I get on a live and people uh, talk about me, you know, what if they say something's ugly, they don't like this, they don't like that. I know some things that I can say to them. First, I'm going to delete it off of this page because that's not what this is about. This channel is about. Uh, and But secondly, I'm going to teach them something. I'm not a teacher for nothing. I'm going to teach them something that even if they don't acknowledge, they're going to use it years to come. 
So that's what we have to remember to do. Uh, don't stop talking. Teach because people need it. And maybe one day they'll find themselves with the help of God saying those same words to someone else, whether we know, ever know that they're saying them or not. Let's just do it. Yep, so this is what I did with this belt. The belt was too little. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to wear this belt, period. You see what I did? I added a piece. I took a piece of fabric, uh, teal fabric, off of a shirt, I think. I think it was a shirt. And I literally fashioned it like the end of the belt. So right here is where this original belt ends. And I added, looks like two and a half to three inches on. And then that still wasn't enough. It was still too tight. I don't like being uncomfortable. Uh, so it was still untight. It was still tight. I was still uncomfortable. So what I did was use this piece of strip and I said, okay, well, I have the blouse to this. So I'm going to use this piece of strip and I'm going to sew it on. And that's why the needle's still hanging there. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Auntie Ellen. I love this buckle, you see that? Looks like ivory. But it's, yeah, it look like, looks like an ivory tusk. The way it looks, um, I mean, it's not. So for those who come for you when you talk about elephant tusk, it is not, okay? This is plastic, but I'm talking about the appearance. And I love that buckle. And I just didn't even think about the size and grabbed it. So this is my extension. And it's fabric. And I punched a makeshift hole. And you see that? The fabric goes through. And it gave me just what I needed <laughs> to be able to wear it. So I could put it on and I could wear it. So... This uh, other part, I thought about it last minute, and then I thought about, you know, taking it on over to the edge so that it looks like it was made with it, because nobody's going to come up to your stomach like this and look at your stomach, so, uh, yeah, let's see. All right, so let's put this to the side, and let's get on it. Okay. In case, Aunt, Auntie Ellen, are you still here? I want to show you this. Thank you, Retire. It also looks like Mother of Pearl. Yes. I knew you'd have the name for it. I don't always have the name, but I definitely know what you're talking about. Yep, it doesn't pop in my head all the time. But So, Auntie Ellen, this is what I'm working on. It's my comfy comforter for a little kid, right? A little baby. And it's almost done. Let me flip it up. It's almost done. It has poo. I was going to put a strap up here so that they can hang it up when they're not using it. But I'm not. But I'm not going to put the strap up there because all I think about after working for the school is the child getting that strap caught around his or her his her neck actually her her neck and I was like uh uh I don't want to do that so okay good I'm glad you're still here because I just wanted to show you this so this is the comfy comforter and this is the pillow that goes with it and as you see is that material that can stretch not quite jersey not Jersey, I, I forget the name, but it's very soft. Let me show you. Maybe you can tell me. See it? And, well, don't put a strap with, no. Yeah, no, I, 
that was my creativity getting away from me. I, I know better. And I, I said, no, because I don't. Now, if it were me monitoring, I could have hooked the strap on the car seat because this is also going on the car seat. I could have hooked the strap on the car seat, but when the child uses this to get into it as a comforter, later, I didn't want that strap to be on there. So it is soft. It's very soft. And I put the jean material on it. This came from blue jean pants or denim pants, blue jeans. Okay, so today what I'm doing is I was supposed to roll this down a little bit more on the inside because this is a little exposed. So I wanted to do that and cover it up as we talk. But so let me get a little thread from my machine. Little, 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 little. And I want to put on the strap. So, yeah, so for 33 years, I worked with children. I absolutely love working with children. Every day, I, I can't do it every day now because uh, I'll be sitting there thinking about my sewing machine. Uh, but I do, I still, I still work online. Still get out in the community. I, I have books, 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 books uh, for community book fairs. And so now I'm looking for the next school to host a book fair with my fun reading club. Okay. So I'm just going to turn this over just, well, let me turn it around. Turn this over just a little bit because it looks like it wants to go over and needs to go over so that it can cover this sheet right here. And then I'm going to stitch that down. And I think after I do that, that'll be enough. I chose the big needle, I'm not sure why. I think it's gonna make it a little tougher. All right, let's see if I can go across this. So Auntie Ellen, what are you doing today? Or did you go out uh, before you started watching? Because some people were watching from the community. I really appreciate the support. I thought I was going to be on here talking to myself for a minute because I couldn't get started. Uh, I had to get my tripod to act right so you all could see me good. And when I came on, I saw people. So I'm, I appreciate it. Even if it's one person, I'll be talking all day. With that one person, it only takes one for me. <laughs> but I really appreciate everyone who comes on. Because you know I will do a short in a minute and keep moving. So thank you guys. Yep. So let's keep going. What I like about this material, I haven't clipped that edge that you see sticking out. But what I like about the plush material is... If you use the lighter color, the thread disappears and it helps you get a more, a cleaner look. So that's what I like about plush material. Okay, Auntie Ellen says she has to do some Oh, to, some chores and FaceTime mommy. Yes. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know she was in the hospital. I did hear you say uh, prayers for mom. And I definitely got on that and will continue. 
but she was released to rehab. That's a good sign. And okay, you go into work in your garden and have some prep stuff uh, for your live at 6 p.m. So I'll see you on your live. All goes well. Thank you so much. And she said, have a nice day all. So thank you all. Thank you for being here, Auntie Ellen. I appreciate you. Yep, so I'm going to keep going across. And then, guys, so if you have a garden, can you tell us how long you've been gardening? And if you have a farm, can you tell us how long you've had your farm? And also, I said this comforter, is it can go in a baby car seat. Tell me what you think about that. Would you put a comforter in a baby car seat? You know, what about when you're on a long drive and you know that baby's going to be in that seat for a long time? Plus, you know, sometimes when you get in a car with all these extreme heats, this extreme heat or heat waves, uh, you can get in a car and that car seat could be burning up if you're one who leaves the car seat in the car or have several, you know, one in each car. So this would be a good thing to put in that seat to keep the baby thighs from burning the back of the baby thighs and to keep uh, the baby comfortable even when it's not hot, when it's cool as well. Okay, 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 you're going to eat breakfast, retired garden. Uh, you started gardening in 2002, wow, but never put in full effort until you retired in 2021. Ah, that brings up another question. After 37 years of working, oh, with the government, oh, nice, love it, love it, love it, love it. So you've been, you really are retired, the retired gardener. So I, yeah, that's, that's great to know. And 37 years of working with the government, that's a long time. I thought I've worked a long time. You have put your time in, you deserve to be retired. <laughs> I hope you're, I hope your garden helps you enjoy your retirement even more. And then started in 2002. Wow. Yes. Yes. Praise God is right. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, okay. 57.59. So you're in the 50s club too, huh? All right. You look great, yeah. And garden, garden, the garden is a blessing. Good. That's good. Yeah, some people look at, you know, those blessings as a blessing and a curse too. I don't, I don't see the curse. Even when the bugs and stuff come, I don't see that as a curse. That's a chance to be out in nature. Yeah, you get rid of the bugs. That's being solution focused, a good problem solver. And it has to be rewarding to see things work out, you know. And you said your kids are grown with their own kids. Oh, you have seven grandchildren. Oh, nice. Yes. That's a good thing. Yeah. So you get to sit back and just enjoy. You deserve it after all that time, all that working, etc. Why you still can. I'm glad you didn't retire when you were falling apart. Yeah, I think that's such a waste if, if people wait until they have all these health issues and that's the only thing that, that makes them stop leaving their house every day 
working. So, yep. And gardening gives you a purpose so that uh, I know some people, when they stop working, they say, I, I need to go back to work because I need something to do during the day. I'm like, wow, you're just in that habitual cycle and you just want to go back and do something, do something else. It doesn't mean you have to go back to work, do something else, work in a different way. So many people out here need us in so many different ways. So I'm still helping children, but I'm going to sew, I'm going to make toys, I'm going to make everything that I didn't make when I was going out working outside of home every day. Yep. So I'm halfway through this. And this is how it's going. See, I think that looks better. So let me show you. This is the before. See, this is exposed. It's tacked down, but it's exposed. And this is the... Wait, hold on. Make sure. Yeah, that's the after where it overlaps. You see that? That's called a fonder, the plush part. And that's what I was going for. So... Yeah, and then the only thing I want to do is I I want to put this somewhere. This is a trim. Actually, I made a loop so that, because I remember the children used to carry their pillows and things in the school. So I made a loop on this pillow so that when they carry it, they don't drop it everywhere. Because, you know, the little hands, when they're trying to take their blanket about they might drop the pillow on the dirty floor. So this will help out a little bit. So just something to solve a few problems. And then I thought about maybe I can hook this through and then tack it onto the blanket so that it doesn't fall off at all. And all they have to do is flip it around and use it. And it's not long enough to choke anybody. So we'll see how that ends up. But for now, I'll just keep on rolling with this edge. So what else can I tell you all? So I showed you, I showed you what Auntie Ellen sent. I showed you what Tree Luxury Candles uh, sent. And you can go over to that website. Uh, She's out of Macon, Georgia, and she makes candles. Uh, she tries to use natural products, and I think all natural, but don't quote me on that. See for yourself. She did send me a candle before, and I used it and loved it. I think I had vanilla, real vanilla. I remember I cooked, so that was real vanilla. <laughs> And it smelled good. And also, um, I see, I think that was the, the only one, vanilla and something. I can't remember the other ingredient. But tree luxury candles. And then, uh, oh, you know what I'm looking for? The retired gardener, if you're still there. I don't, okay. I don't wear foundation uh, often, but I want, when I see people doing their videos and putting on makeup, right, because I, I play different characters in my story, in my stories and in my storytelling, because I play different characters, I want makeup so that I can get different looks. I've done face paint, you, you name it, some of everything, right? So what I'm looking for, if it exists at all, is, okay, you're still there. I'm looking for makeup. Some people put on makeup and they normally have like beards and all of that and they shave it off, shave it off. And they put on makeup, a certain makeup to where you can't even tell that they had a beard. And... I 
really want some. <laughs> I, I don't know why, yeah, but I just want some because I want to like, when my face has its episodes and breaks out, I want to be able to like clean my face, put some protective whatever on it and then wear makeup for my self-care day. <clears throat> And as I said, I don't wear, um, I wear lipstick, but not often because my husband doesn't care if I wear makeup or not. This is just for me and my curiosity. I wonder what makeup they have. So if you know anything about it, let me know. If you know anyone who knows anything about it, let me know. I don't wear a lot of makeup, but I usually purchase Estee Lauder. Okay. Estee Lauder. Okay. Thank you. And what else? That's pretty much it for that. So, um, I will try to do live videos. I'm telling you, I'm bad. I, I'm... I have I had to manage time for so many years so I would jump on and I would jump off of social media that's why I've done so many shorts if you will go and look at the shorts I've done so many shorts managing time so I said I just have to take time to do videos like this and relax a little bit um, because I'm just go 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 from one activity to the next activity. Uh, okay, you wear mostly lipstick. I know you don't really have to wear makeup from what I've seen, uh, retired garden. And then you said, my husband says most makeup doesn't fit your skin. I would definitely tell you the color I've tried. Yeah, your skin is fair fairer than mine, so I know that color, <laughs> you know, that color wouldn't work unless I was just trying to get, like, a different tone, but I also don't want makeup to make my skin look darker, because I think that looks kind of fake, yeah, it looks kind of fake, so, uh, yeah, yeah, you have pretty skin, I've seen your, all your videos, and, All right, so what I'm doing is coming to an end. Well, not all the way to the end. Come to a stopping point, I should say. All right, still pretty flexible. All right, and it did pretty good. See that? Fits right in. And Auntie, can Auntie Ellen can tell you more. You said, ah. Uh, <laughs> you said, I think we are the same. <laughs> hey, probably, I'm telling you. <laughs> but not, not, I mean, your skin is definitely fairer than mine for what I've seen. Uh, I mean, I don't have the best lighting, but my skin is not really, really, really. Yeah, um, we used to say pecan tan. <laughs> okay. Oh, she said, I think we're at the same tone. I'll look back. I'll look back and see. All right, so I'm coming to the end on this one. It seems like I... So thank you guys for helping me. Um, some some people were telling me, uh, who is it? Healthy G Mom, Mike. They were. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Email me later. That's right. Yeah. All right. So I'll I'll look for it. 
And then, so Healthy G Mom was telling me how, you know, that I need to stay on a little bit longer. And because I did a short video, but the video, I didn't post the video, but I posted it. And then when I looked at it, I was like, uh, I have to take this down because like my whole head was sideways, literally sideways. So I had to take it down because I didn't want anybody looking at that. Um, it, I mean, I didn't want to look at it. And thank you for saying I have great skin. My skin will break out like at the drop of a dime if I put something on it. And I, I listened to the doctors about, you know, making sure we have good food in our bodies. And I'm, one thing I know for sure is food. I know we put good food in our bodies because my husband and I are around each other enough to know uh, what each other eat during the day. And I'm telling you, I try to make sure I put something good in this body because I want my body to last. And I want to be strong for a long time. All right, so let me get my scissors. You can see them there. Yeah. Let me get my scissors so that it's off. Uh, I was looking for my small scissors. I have everything in this kit. I'm going to have to tell people who sews, who uh, sew to represent your sewing kit. I have a lot of sewing bags, okay? So what I'm going to do for myself and what I'm doing for myself, this bag right here that has this paisley on the inside, I made this, I think, last night because when I put the tie around and I got smart this time, enough to say I'm going to put this tie around it like this. Pull, pull, pull. And let it flop like that and it'll be a decorative piece after I tie this up like a sack. But guess what? That holds my finished products. Thank you. <laughs> That holds my finished products. And then if I sit it here near my sewing machine, it doesn't look messy. And you can tie it. You can tie it in a full-blown knot because this is satin. See? You can tie it in a knot and it's not going to get too tight that you can't take it apart. And you blouse it like this. And ta-da! It looks good. And... You can sit it anywhere and it just looks like a sack. And it fits with, it fits with the room. You see that? <laughs> yep. So, yeah, I try to do little things. Also, uh, while sitting uh, in my chair, if I don't get up, like I've been sitting for an hour now. Like, yeah, I try not to get myself stiff. <laughs> so I try to get up. I try to get up. But before that, if I can't get up, what you don't see is just like this bag, I made a long bag. Just like this bag. So that they can both sit in my sewing area. And let me see if I can pull it up to show you. I like to show. I like to prove things to people. Hold on, let me. Hold on. It's under my foot. That's why. Okay. You see this long bag? This long bag. This long bag has material. But guess what? It looks like a pillow, right? I put the... Oh, sorry. I hit the cord. So I put it down there so that it can be like a bean bag, 
like the bean bag that I made, I put it on the community tab, under the community tab, like that bean bag. And I can put my foot on it and stretch so that I don't get too stiff when I sit down. I'm sitting for a purpose right now so that I can stay in front of this camera, but let me take this off and go back. It feels a little, is it hot? Excuse me guys, I'm asking my husband. Will you adjust the air just a little bit? And because I think with my beanie and my sweater, like the temperature that it was, like me being near this light is making me get a little warm. Not enough to sweat, but just enough to notice. All right, so let me pull this off. I, I need a little more thread. I'm pulling from my bob, you guys. <laughs> pulling from the bob. So, retired gardener, do you sew at all? I know Auntie Ellen sews. And I know a few more people sew. But... Okay, let's keep going with this. All right, let's get back in. And I don't know, the people who sew, I don't know if you, if you tie the end of your knot, you said yes, but just mending, okay, yeah. Yep, yeah, everyone should know how to mend things. I saw a survivalist on those uh, reality shows and because of tying knots and mending, he had a comfortable time out in the wild. So I think that's, and the, not to mention all of the cool things that they make for the people who are watching the shows, the hats. Oh, let's see what he said. I just told my husband, you make me want to learn. <laughs> yes, I'm telling you, I was surprised when Auntie Ellen says she, um, when she said she deviates from, you know, the instructions when sewing. I was surprised because I know she that's something that she teaches and you know I thought it was something that she followed basically to the letter most of the time I was, I'm sure it was some things you have to follow but yeah if I can do whatever I like I'll upcycle, I'll sew from scratch, I'll do whatever. But when I have to follow the pattern to the letter, uh, I'll say it's not as fun anymore because I like to create. I enjoy creating more than I do with following uh, the pattern. Not that I can't do it for those who are analyzing it everything I say, not that I can't do it, because for 33 years I've followed a system, but it's more relaxing when you can do, when you can design the way you want, move at your pace, and that's why before I show anything to people, I try to uh, know that is something that I could probably create again so that if they order something I can get it to them in a timely fashion but hand 
made takes a little time and when you don't have the big machines that does all the bulk uh, sewing that we see I mean to where you could do it at a, a, a rapid pace is what I mean when I say bulk so bulk so then we just have to uh, take our time and, and let people know you know how long we think it'll take uh, which is not like it doesn't take a month to make a beanie it doesn't even take two weeks to make a beanie but if you want me to find the material and keep it at a good cost then I need to go take that drive find what you desire get your thoughts on it and then make it so it's a a little process. Yep, and let's see what the comments. How old was I when I learned to sew? Um, my mom, I remember when we could hold scissors. Let me think about the age because I do teach early learners so we were at least old enough to use i know i was past kindergarten or at least i think i was past kindergarten i remember my mom saying to us cut out this pattern for me and we had to be past seven years old and we would uh, cut out patterns for my mom because she was the number one sewer um, in our home. Uh, she doesn't sew so much these days, but yeah, she was the number one sewer. So I would say after seven years old and then I got old enough to, and I would do mostly uh, hand sewing. Okay. It said something went wrong. I'm not sure if. Can you hear me? If you're there, let me know if you can hear me. Because I saw a message came up on my screen said something went wrong and tap to retry. So I did tap. Hopefully you can see me. And I was telling, I was uh, answering the question, how old were you when you learned to sew? Okay. I can send you material or, oh, okay. Yeah, if you have your own material, that's good. Uh, but, you know, you would let me see it. Certainly let me see it. I definitely want a paisley, oh, okay, or maybe a knit hat like mine for the winter, so I might get the material too by the end of August. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, How, what, I'm just here going along, so whenever you're ready, okay, and maybe have the hat before the end, oh, yeah, it wouldn't take me a long time. Uh, like once I once I get it and know it's something, you know, a material that I feel comfortable using. There's certain materials I try not to use because they snag so easily. Uh, so I'm not a fan of using certain material, but rayon oh, it's a little tough but i can put a band around you know something uh to stabilize it a little more and yeah okay but no i got you i got you no matter what uh i'm reading your comment 
from this bone. Um, retired gardener, yeah. Yeah, but um, whatever, whatever I can do, I'll do it for you. I don't, I don't claim to know how to do everything, but what I know, I know. And one thing I do know is how to put a hat together, a beanie, I'll say a beanie, a beanie together, because I haven't done a brim hat, hard brim hat. Uh, that's probably... Something that my mom would do or somebody. So she can put together anything. She used to make our prom dresses. And uh, I don't know if I put it on. So on, on the community tab on under Auntie Bev Jones uh, page or Aunt B's Homestead. Under that community tab, if you go back down a few months ago, you'll see some of the things that I have done in the past and posted on the page. There are things that I just, I have here. Hopefully I can show you, I'm coming to the end of this. I just want to make sure I get this baby thing done. And I really appreciate you being here with me. I see several people on, but I don't I don't see everyone in the chat. I guess the more you type, the more I can see the names. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start going back before I mess up something. You'll challenge me like my mom and husband. Oh boy, <laughs> another one in my life. <laughs> you know, sometimes I need that though. I need that challenge. Yeah. Just like uh, Auntie Ellen's challenging me. She may not call it a challenge, it's a, but to me, when you send me something and say make something, whatever you like, that's a challenge. Especially if I know you're gonna be uh, anticipating the outcome. Yep. Or an outcome. And it's going to be good because I am going to create something. She's done like a lot of work with that material. I guess it's just uh, some of the good stuff that she had over to the side that she's not using. But it looks great. Now, if I had to put together the blocks like she did, it would take me forever because I would be somewhere making a hat <laughs> and earrings. <laughs> so, retired gardener, do you wear earrings? Anybody on here, do you wear earrings? Sorry, guys. Um, as I said, this is my first time uh, chatting for a while. Retired gardener, her name keeps popping up. Uh, she's typing in, so I'm calling her name, but when I ask a question, that question is for anyone who hears this uh, during the live stream and during the replay. So the questions that I'm asking, feel free to answer them whenever you're available. I know it's a time where everyone has their own thing to do, but I appreciate it everyone who looks on here okay so we're gonna finish this up and then i'll show you how it looks now okay 
And I just roll it like that just to make sure everything settles in and that it's tight, all right? So I do not tie the end of the string. It does not come apart because I cross it up as I sew along. So the reason I don't tie the end of the thread when I um, thread a needle is I, I've washed my mom for one. And when you tie the end, sometimes when you don't pull your thread or when you pull your thread through and one side makes it through before the other and the thread slips and the knot gets caught. I'm like, I don't have time to get halfway and let that mess up on the in the middle of me uh, stitching something. So I just stopped tying the edge and it works. So I'm going to clean up a little bit, just a little bit. So now when I turn it around, this is what you see. It's overlapped. See that? I like that much better. So on this side, or at this edge, it's like that. One side. And it's more low with the jean, because you know the jean puffs up a little bit. On this side so you have it like this so what it looks like to me from here because I'm not sure what it looks like from where you are it looks like when you have a plush sweater on yeah a plush sweater I'll hold it up and show you you see that like when you have a plush and this is oh, you, little leaves flexible but it's not elastic so you don't pull it just like a sweater like when you wash a sweater and you lay it flat to dry thank you you said excellent job thank you and love oh you love earrings too so so do you all like wearing earrings to match your, your beanie or your hat? Or do you just like uh, earrings that could go with anything that you have? I love, this feels so good. <laughs> I love the way this comforter feels. Comforters I can do all day. I have not done a quilt. I, I started on a quilt for my sister-in-law. And then I looked at it and I put it on the line. I know the errors that I made. I know that. And I learned best from my, from my own errors. But I, uh, what, what happened? I decided the roses that I made, I saw one was a little off. I was like, I'm going to turn it into art now. Like, I thought it was art, but I'm going to turn it into real art now. And I said, what I'm going to do is add, oh, I have the strips here. I found this material, and this is what I did the back of her lap quilt with. So I got a, and what I did hers with had pre-designed uh, fabric or fabric art. So these are strips just strips from that back material that goes on the back of her quilt. And I found a piece when I was making the bag last night and I started cutting these up. So if I can get, <clears throat> if I can get this, excuse me, into smaller strips, fold it over just so, and then Go down it with a simple stitch. 
I will make probably a rose, a, either a rose bush or just roses scattered about, but it will have a vine on there. And maybe I can think of some other things to do, but yeah, I'll show it to you guys when I finish. You guys are awesome. You have been on for a long time with me. And um, I really appreciate it. So let me see. Excellent job. Thank you. And uh, okay, so you like earrings, retired gardener likes earrings to match your hat. Okay, cool. Cool. So when some of the others, um, when you hear this during the replay, let me know if you like beanies. Let me turn it another way. Wait, I love putting it up like this. Okay. So if you like beanies with earrings to match, let me know. I use decorative stitches. And so my machine, let me see if I can show you. So my machine here, this is a brother. This is a brother. I've had this machine so long because when I when I was working, uh, ooh, I've been away from one job. The job where I was managing the school for what, seven years? So when I was working <clears throat> at that particular school, I actually bought this way before then. I have to, I have to look at a date on one of the books or something. The manuals, excuse me, on the manual. But this machine has been with me for a long, long time. Eleven, at least thirteen, fifteen years or more. But, uh, yeah, this Brother LX 2500, yeah, I think I'm correct in saying that. Uh, it's been with me for a long time, and it was sitting in the closet. I no longer want to have things sitting in the closet waiting for me to not be so busy that I can't enjoy what I like doing. I didn't know I liked sewing this much, but I do. And I think I like what I can create more from sewing. I'm learning new things. Sorry, some of the material was on my lip. Some of the, um, I guess, lint or something was on my lip. But I like sewing Sewing, 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 sewing. And I think I like it because I create the things that I want, but I don't want to trust someone else to send it to me from a picture that I see online. That's why I try to show you all when I say I made this, I try to show you what I've made, what I've made because I definitely want you to see that it's real and not just a pretty picture, if you know what I mean. Uh, Cause we can do anything on a picture, uh, edit pictures, etc. So I want you to know that I'm a real person. I'm really learning some things as I go. I really enjoy what I do and I really like it when people talk back to me. Uh, when I'm online. If not, then I'll go back to doing shorts. But I really appreciate this time, especially with the retired gardener. And I look forward to learning more about you, learning more about, and when I say you, people on this page in general. So please communicate. That's what I'm used to with people face to face, or I'll think it's just a number on this computer <laughs> and you know won't think it's real 
a real person. So, yeah. I'll hope to do some things and chat with you in the future. But for now, we've been on here for a long time. Uh, the retired gardener said, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate you hanging in here with me. Uh, I let mine play, you know, when I'm at dinner and uh, over to the side when I ask my husband if it's okay with him, you know, when we're not talking at that time. And then I also uh, let mine play when I'm riding along uh, in the car. So I try to support other pages. So if you could, I, I don't always ask people to share the video because sometimes when we're just chatting like this, unless it's something that you know someone can use, I don't ask you to share. But I say like, tell, and subscribe when I post my videos. So tell someone they can come here because everyone has their channel for a reason. And I believe that's your space and you can put what you want on your space. If you want to put something that I post from my community tab, sometimes I make posts that can uh, look good on someone else's page, I guess if that makes sense, and that they can put on their page without taking away from their page. So if you want to do that, you can do that. If you want to share the video, share the video. I really appreciate it all. Please press the thumbs up if you haven't. Um, and... Let's just keep moving forward together. Thank you guys so much for coming on. I'm Aunt B from Aunt B's Homestead. And then tell me why you uh, named your channel the way you did. I, I just, look, they, they used to say touch a nose for being nosy. I, I'm going to touch my nose, but I still want to know. Why did you name your channel the way you uh, did? I named my channel Aunt B's Homestead because... Uh, I'm an aunt to 15, 16 children, 15 or 16 children, I think I have a game. a lot of children, uh, one was just born. Uh, I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing. So, yes, and that's why I really am Auntie Bev Jones, just like. The retired gardener, uh, she's retired and she's a gardener. So I am Auntie Bev Jones or Aunt Bev or Aunt B, uh, along with Ms. B, the storyteller, uh, as uh, the writer and the reader of stories. But consistently, for life, I'm Aunt Belle. Yep. So that's why I made the channel the way I did. Aunt B's Homestead. And we do a lot of things around this homestead. <laughs> so, guys, I thank you so much again for coming on. And I'm going to say the final goodbye uh, for this video. And then go over. Please support the shorts that I make so that I can know that you may want another live stream and I'll be back on. I did put in the uh, community tab that I plan to come on every Saturday uh, from 7-29-2023 to 8-29-2023. So thank you for joining me and plan to meet me back here at the same time next week if all goes well for all of us. All right, thank you.